What up guys, I'm back with probably the most exciting unit analysis yet. Less than a year ago, I felt like I had an underdeveloped understanding of Tia, and was always unsure of its role in sets and how exactly it should be warping my gameplay. In 2018 it's really been clicking with me, and I've found that a lot of what makes Tia difficult to read is that it requires you to play the reactive game perfectly. So let's get right into it. Firstly, the most important thing to understand about Tia is that it's rarely ignorable. Occasionally you'll hit a breach-proof set or a set with really strong green-blue units and no other red support where it's fine to skip Tia, but otherwise Tia should be a big part of your strategy. With that established, you now have to determine what kind of Tia timing will work best for the set. In this set, there's not many defensive units, with Shredder providing the only support, and this is going to be the most important factor that determines the Tia timing. There's no better absorber than Wall, and if we assume that both Conduit and Animus should be bought here, then it's especially important that there's no good green or red soak units, like Plexo, Aegis, Corpus, or Blood Pact. So it seems like his plan was to get Lance Tooth with Immolates, which would normally be a fine strategy. But because of this tech choice by him, I determined that this early Tia timing could win the game right here. On 12 drones of Blastforge and Animus, the maximum defense he can put out per turn is a wall, rhino, and engineer, which would allow him to defend against only 8 damage per turn, and I'm already at 10 damage with more emulates to come. This is a common experience for me on ladder where my opponent just doesn't fully respect Tia and falls quickly. Even if he had set up a stronger defense or there were stronger defenders in the set, I could have built up more attackers and delayed my Tia until I knew it would win, since there's no urgency for me to get it quickly unless my opponent could also buy a Tia. My opponent lost the game here when he skipped Conduit, which allowed me to get any Tia timing I want. To further explain that concept, here we have a match where I once again am being the aggressive player and threaten to buy my Tia pretty fast, and with Frostbrooder to add some extra potency. My opponent sets up well to defend against this, but at the same time buys this mobile animus and a second conduit to threaten to buy his own Tia. I'm not set up at all to defend against the Tia from his side, so I'm forced to buy mine now which is a little bit early against this double Xeno from him. He decides to buy his own counter Tia, but buying Tia half a turn later than your opponent rarely works out well. Something like this almost always happens when you try it. If you're on a small economy and defending against a Tia, you usually need to be committing 100% of your resources to efficiently defending. This is why my strategy had some merit. I didn't have to commit to defensive units like Xeno because I set up my Tia first and didn't have to worry about his as much. It seemed like his strategy was designed to force out my early Tia so he could try and defend against it easier and win in a long game. And I felt that the counter Tia was an unnecessary risk. An immediate counter Tia is usually bad, but there's always exceptions. If it's guaranteed to deal sick damage on the first attack, then it can sometimes be correct. This was a weird match with an incredibly difficult set to play, and my opponent seemed to have read it slightly better than me by skipping Tarsiers and going directly for grenade mechs. Although I got first Tia, it didn't immediately do lethal damage. Tia tends to work very well with other big burst units, and he got this gigantic burst with the grenade mechs selling his blast forges before I did. His Tia destroys pretty much everything I have on the first attack, so I didn't even get to take advantage of having the first Tia. Here we have another set where a low to mid econ Tia looks dominant. Grimbotch and Protoplasm provide a little bit of defensive support but they're not really the greatest soak that you want against Tia, and Colossus would be too slow to come out. 
In TS sets, P2 gets the really obvious natural conduit build. But as P1, I have the difficult decision of whether I should be buying conduit on turn 2 or 3. I decided to buy it on turn 2, which tends to lend itself to very aggressive Tia builds. Because you're committed to a small economy, and if you don't buy Tia first, then P2's Tia becomes very hard to defend. So because I went turn 2 conduit, and he did the obvious line where he threatens to buy his own Tia, I'm completely committed to getting the first Tia as soon as I have 3 green, because there's no way I can win if he gets the first Tia. However, it didn't work out very well, because he set up his defense very nicely and I didn't have enough econ or aggressive enough attackers to have a good follow-up. This set just wasn't aggressive enough to justify the turn 2 conduit. And in analysis, turn 3 conduit works out a lot better. If you're gonna go for the turn 2 conduit build, then you have to be sure that a super fast Tia is gonna win. Ideally with lots of cheap aggressive units for support. This set has some similarities to the last one. Having pretty much no defenders and Grimbach as your main supporting attacker for a Tia strategy. This time I didn't go for the turn 2 conduit as P1, however he does this conduit animus build which is definitely a foreshadowing of a very aggressive Tia build. So because he did this weird build, I needed to get a blast forge very quickly and defend the threat of him buying two Grimbotches, and also got my own conduit for the potential to threaten my own Tia in the future, or for force fields to defend against his. So normally in these situations I would want to be getting an Animus here, and saving my green to threaten to buy a Tia to force his Tia to come out now. But he's being so incredibly aggressive with these Grimbotches, that I'm not sure I can even defend if I buy an Animus. These Grimbotches will all run out of lifespan soon, so my opponent is fully committed to a short term plan, where he wins in the next 5 turns, so I figured my best move here was to commit to defending this efficiently, and outlast him in the longer game. He puts down the Tia now, and I fairly comfortably defend it with my double Blast Forge. This Tia may seem a bit early, but after analyzing what happens if he delays it and buys more Grimbotches, it doesn't really make a difference because his current Grimbotches will die off. It's important to note that I'm not going to be trying to fit in any attackers, and will be committing 100% of my resources to defending. It's generally a bad idea to try and buy any attackers against an all-in Tia, until it runs out of stamina. I defend fairly easily for the next couple turns, and at the end he's left with pretty much nothing but a Tarsier and two drones, and the game is an easy win for me from here. Although it can be very tempting to go for these super sharp fast Tia rushes with temporary damage, if they aren't 100% guaranteed to win the game quickly, and your opponent handles their defense well, they often fizzle out by the end. This is why it's usually better to have a long term plan, and get more Tarsiers so that you have enough attack to close out the game after the Tia runs out of stamina. Here's a Tia set that's a little bit more aggressive. Tia becomes much stronger in sets that contain cheap ways to spend your tech, since you're usually left with too much, especially when you're planning to get Tia fast. Here we have Frostbite which is both a cheap way to spend red, and also makes it very hard to defend a Tia, as well as Cryray to spend green. And if you can get a Bloodphage before a Tia, then your economy won't be as bad after the Tia. One thing to note here is that Corpus helps the defending player a lot, assuming that both players will be forced to buy an Animus here. I go for the turn 2 conduit as P1, assuming the slightly more aggressive nature of the set could make it work, with a plan to buy Phage and Bite on turn 4, before getting my Tia. He responded by getting second conduit to immediately threaten Tia, and this puts me in an awkward position where I need to somehow defend against the Tia that he could buy, but also set up to have a strong Tia myself. 
That's a hard tightrope to walk, and I didn't really accomplish that by going all in on defending with the preemptive corpus and blastforge. Now he doesn't have to buy his Tia since my Tia isn't that scary anymore, with no damage behind it. I'm not sure if there's really a good turn to make here with my limited resources, because after analyzing a few different ideas, it seemed like I was just in a bad position here. His reaction to my opening was just perfect up until this point. Here I think he makes a huge mistake by buying his Tia right away anyway. This is what we call a naked Tia, and that's a Tia that doesn't have any damage behind it. This is the one thing I was hoping he would do, because I was completely ready for it and he could have done something like Tarsier Frostbite and two drones instead, which would have been amazing. As it is, this is a Tia that's only doing 5 damage on its first stamina, since 2 is getting absorbed by my wall. I defend his Tia fairly easily, and because he doesn't have a good follow-up, I get my own Tia much later without any trouble, which wins the game for me from there. This turned out the way it did because I had a Blast Forge ready for the naked Tia. And I'd say that generally you should never do a Naked Tia if your opponent has a Blast Forge. However, Naked Tia can work as a response to greedy builds that are aimed at getting damage super fast on a very low econ. For example, here my opponent went for a player 1 turn 2 Animus, which is an extremely aggressive build. His plan here is to be getting Tia with Gaussite Symbiote. And if he managed to pull it off, then it would be extremely hard for me to defend. In response, I did the same player 2 build that my opponent did in the last replay, to immediately set up my own Tia. He set up his defense as well as he could have from the position he was in. However, I calculated that this Tia would be too hard to defend on 8 drones, and went for it anyway. Perforator works pretty well with Tia as a way to efficiently push out more damage by selling my otherwise useless red. He ends up having to hold a bunch of drones on Tia's final stamina, and this leaves me with an extra attacker and a drone after the dust settles. As you can see, a straight up Tia rush can be a really good counter to other rushes on very low econs because they don't have enough gold to defend properly. Turn 1 or 2 Animus especially have issues in Tia sets, since they usually can't threaten their own Tia quickly enough. For a change of pace, here's a more defensive set where a fast Tia is guaranteed not to happen. Xeno for Absorb and Doomed Wall for Soak means both of us should be building a larger amount of attack before building a Tia becomes viable. Going for Lance Tooth is the strongest way to open here, and getting it with Drake seems to be the most efficient way of getting it. So I'm going for the standard P2 opening to rush out Drake. He went for a different approach by getting an early Animus rather than going for lots of Lance Teeth and I may seem to be in a good position from being a bit ahead in attack. But I'm actually in a big predicament, because my opponent can throw down the Tia whenever he wants. If I were to buy an Animus this turn, then my opponent could just buy his Tia, and even if that Tia seems a bit early, it would make my Animus completely worthless. There's nothing good to buy with it when I'm having to spend all my gold defending every turn. So because of this, I can basically never buy Tia from this position, so I don't even bother buying that Animus. He throws down his Tia at the perfect time, and I'm having to sack Lance Teeth on defense just to survive, so I throw in the towel. I misread the set a little bit, because like I said before, Tia is rarely ignorable, and this set was no exception. Drake Lancetooth is a more efficient opening than Tarsier's, 
but I didn't take into consideration that it isn't catered towards getting Tia. I would just like to quickly review a rare and interesting tactic with Tia that I used in this match. It's a Zamora mirror where he got the first Zamora, and I want to make absolutely sure that I can get the first Tia in this situation. But we can't exactly be buying Centurion and Tia on the same turn, since that would both require 2 red income and 25 gold. It also seems difficult to be buying Centurion after you buy a Tia. So with all of that taken into consideration, I identified that I need to be buying both Centurion and Tia before my opponent does. Getting the Centurion here seems like a bad play on the surface, since it doesn't give me any extra defensive value this turn, and I could pretty easily just buy it next turn. But this play actually 100% guarantees that I get the first Tia. If he bought Tia here, then he has no chance of winning, because it guarantees that he never gets his Centurion, which is not skippable here. From here I win pretty handily with an overwhelming amount of damage. Although Tia is usually best used as a kill move, it doesn't always have to be used that way. In sets where a really huge econ is correct, Tia consumes a much smaller percentage of your income and can provide you with a lot of tempo in the right set. We can really start to see the effects of our tempo advantage on the second Tia stamina. He's having to hold back his chieftains on 3 lifespan, while we're able to attack with them first. And he's also having to build walls and spend red on Tarsiers, while we are building these incredibly efficient Hellhounds. By the final swing, we've fully established a train of chieftains which are about to make our defense very easy, and he wasn't even able to buy any more of them. Our defense continues being very easy for the rest of the game, and he's never actually able to buy another chieftain, and very quickly runs out of wall supply and also soon runs out of Aegis supplies. So it's an easy win from here. That's it guys, I know that was a lot to take in. Tia is definitely the most complicated unit I've covered so far, but I hope I did it justice. Stay tuned for an Arcasadora unit analysis, coming up next.